All right, uh, let's get started. Uh, if you have not, how many of you have not formed your group for mini projects yet? Everyone in the room has their group? Okay, that's great. Uh, if for whatever reason didn't raise your hands, but uh, still have not formed a group, please remember Monday is the deadline. Um, so we we talked about asymptotic runtime analysis. We did asymptotic runtime analysis for the gate shape algorithm. Uh, and in particular, we went through this entire kind of flow chart, started off with the problem statement, designed the algorithm, um, then did the correctness analysis, then designed the data structures, and did runtime analysis. Okay. One of the things I want to stress is, again, uh, the gate shape algorithm is a linear time algorithm because the input size is 2n squared and the runtime is big O of n squared. And again, I, I think I'd mentioned this a couple of times before, this is one of the common confusions uh, that students have. They tend to think uh, gate shape algorithm is quadratic because it says unsquared. All right. So what we are going to focus on next for the next few weeks uh, is a generic tool that allows us to abstract real life problems into mathematical problems. Okay. And so we'll do so with something called graphs. How many of you have at least seen graphs before? Oh, yeah, that's actually fewer hands than I'd anticipated because I, anyways. Uh, if, if you have not, that's okay. We are going to go through them, define them, and all the good stuff. But basically what graphs allow you to do is to represent relationships between pairs of entities. Right? Um, and this can take many forms. Uh, so here's one example. Uh, in this example, the entities would be a news program or news program host. And there is a relationship between two entities if one is mentioned in the other show. Right? So uh, this is Rachel Maddow, Bill O'Reilly, uh, Joe Scarborough, Brian Williams, and Anderson Cooper. And so if you have followed news for the last, I don't know, however many years, it's not surprising that there's mention between Maddow and O'Reilly. Um, we are going to call each entity as a node or a vertex, and I'm going to interchange node and vertices or nodes and vertices fairly often. This relationship will typically denote by this a line connecting the two entities, and that's going to be called an edge. Well, sorry, I clicked too many times. But if you also include in John Stewart when he used to be around, uh, and basically everyone else got a mention in his show. All right. In the next few slides, what I'll try, quickly try to do is try to make you realize that graphs are everywhere. It's just a matter of thinking of things as graphs. Uh, so for example, if you look at uh, the airline route maps, um, and this is of course not the entire airline route map for the US and, and not even for JetBlue, but here every node or entity is a airport, and there's an edge between say New York City and Buffalo because there's a direct flight between these two airports. Any guesses what this graph represents? The internet, I have to ask you name. Neck. So next right, this is the internet. Every node here, I believe, is our, uh, one of those BSPs, and you have a connection between them if you can route packets directly from one BSP to the other. Guesses on this one? I'll ask your name, Jared. Uh, it's not species, it's actually uh, math articles on Wikipedia. And you have a connection if one article, there is a UR, uh, 
uh, URL for one article in the other article. Uh, guess about this one, I'm warning this graph is probably many, many years old. It's actually part of the Facebook network at really, really long time back. Uh, so every node here is a person with an account on Facebook, and you have an edge if they are friends with each other. So the point here was to just kind of show you a bunch of you know kind of real life uh, applications where you can easily think of the underlying structure as a graph. And once you realize this, then you can start asking many interesting questions. Um, and so on and so forth. So um, basically what we're going to spend for most of the rest of today is just go over some basic graph definitions that we're going to use throughout this course. Um, and so the way I'm going to do it is I'm just quickly run through some examples and then we're going to formally define it um, uh, on, uh, on the screen. So a path is just a sequence of vertices in a graph that are connected uh, by edges. Okay. So for example, uh, oh, I added uh, Sanjay Gupta to the list here, just because. So the path, so if you go from, you can go from Sanjay Gupta to Anderson Cooper to John Stewart to Joe Scarborough. So this sequence of Gupta, Cooper, Stewart, and Scarborough is a path. So it's a sequence of vertices that each consecutive ones are connected by an edge. The length of this path is three because you took three hops. There were three edges uh, in this path. And if there exists a path between two nodes in a graph, we said that these two are connected. And so in this example, uh, Sanjay Gupta and Joe Scarborough are connected because I just showed you one. Any questions so far? All right, so we can, once we have defined the notion of two vertices being connected in a graph, you can talk about whether the entire graph is connected or not. So I said U and W are connected if and only if there exists a path between them. And we see a graph is connected if, you, if any two pairs of vertices in the graph are connected to each other. Um, by the way, by default, we'll always assume that a vertex is connected to itself. Okay, so every vertex U is connected to itself. All right. So another way to think of connected graphs is it's a graph where every two vertices have at least one path between them. So is this a connected graph? Yeah. Right, you can go from it. Uh, you can add in two new uh, hosts. Uh, most of you probably don't know. They are Barkhadat and Rajiv Sadesai. They are news anchors in India. Uh, if I add these two vertices and the edge between them, is this graph connected? No. no. So John says, for example, you cannot, uh, there's no path between Barkhadat and, say, Sanjay Gupta. And so there's no way you can kind of hop onto the edges to go from from this part to this part. Right? So this is not a connected graph. A cycle is like a path, but where you start from a place and end up where you started off. Right? So it's a sequence of K vertices connected by edges, uh, where the first and the last are the same, and everything in the middle is distinct. So for example, uh, Maddo, O'Reilly, Stewart, Maddo, like this thing is a cycle. And it makes into the sense if you kind of trace your finger around this, you'll actually make a cycle on it on paper. Any questions? So if I if I went bit too quickly with everything, don't worry. Uh, we're going to spend maybe more time than you want on these definitions, but uh, we're going to make sure that we define everything properly, go through some examples to make sure all of these basic concepts uh, are good. Okay.
All right, I guess we are going with the smallest size today. All right. So we are going to denote a graph typically by G, but there is nothing special about the choice. Uh, and what a graph is going to be pair of, is going to be pair of two sets. The first is the set of vertices or nodes which typically again will denote by V, and E is the set of edges. So what does this set mean? It's a, uh, each edge is a pair of vertices. So a succinct way to say that is E is a subset of all possible pairs of vertices. Okay. And unless it is stated explicitly otherwise, and when I'm talking about graphs, and you see me use the letter N, that by default is the number of nodes. And if you see me the letter use M, then that's the number of edges. Okay. This is not something that I made up, this is pretty standard in math. Right? So whenever we're talking about graphs, N is the number of vertices, M is the number of edges. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about whether a graph, yeah, Richard. Uh, what is the x to be This is the cross product. Any other questions? We, there's also a notion of whether a graph is directed or not, and that basically is determined by whether the relationship is symmetric or not, right? So, uh, so G is undirected if the relationship is symmetric. So if there's an edge from U to V, there has to be an edge from V to U back. So it's undirected if for all U and V, which are vertices, there is an edge from U to V, if and only if there is an edge from V to U. In e. And so if you kind of draw it out, uh, and so we typically, sorry, think of this as a directed edge from U to V. So what we are saying is if there is an edge from U to V, there's always an edge from V to U. Okay. And we'll typically, to kind of have slightly mess, less messier pictures, we're just going to replace it with a line with no arrows. Okay. Uh, yeah, Evan. Um, so uh, Evan's question was, I said every node is by default connected to itself. So doesn't it mean we always need to have an edge from U to itself? Well, so here's a matter of um, kind of notation or uh, convenience. So we are not going to assume that there's an edge from U to U, but by definition, by fiat, we'll say U is connected to U. Uh, so G otherwise is directed. So what that means is if say for example, there is an edge from U to V, but not, not the way back, then, then it's direct. So here's another example. Is this graph directed or undirected? How many think undirected? How many think directed? And the rest of you don't care. Okay, so um, this is actually directed and the reason is you, because there's an edge from B to C, but not the way back, right? So the important point is not that there is one pair which has edges going in both directions. It has to be for every pair. If there is an edge in one direction, there has to be an edge in the other direction, okay? 
So this is directed but not undirected. Okay. So kind of just to make sure everyone's on the same page, let's kind of go through some of the example graphs we saw and try to decide whether they were directed or undirected. So the news host graph where the nodes were news hosts and there was an edge. If one person got mentioned uh, in other person's news cast in some episode at some point of time, would it be directed or undirected? How many think undirected? How many think directed? Wow, no one has any opinion whatsoever. Ah. Sorry? Can I repeat the question? The question is whether the news host graph is directed or undirected. Uh, so John said undirected. It's directed. It's not necessary that if A talks about B in their show, then B has to talk about A in their show. Right, so we'll uh, go with directed here. It is possible that you could carve out a small piece of this entire graph where it is directed, right? So everyone talks about everyone else in the show, but it's not necessarily the case that uh, it will be true for every pair. Okay, uh, the airline map, where there's an edge from airport A to airport B if there's a flight from A to B. <coughs> directed? Uh, how many think directed? Okay, how many think undirected? Okay, um, so again, this is a matter of Theoretically, it's possible to be directed, but for all the airlines that I know of, if there's a flight going from A to B, there's always a return flight, right? So uh, we'll go with undirected here. Wikipedia page, where you have an edge from say A to B, uh, if there's a URL for B in A, is this directed or undirected? Okay, how many undirected? Okay, how many directed? All right, yeah, so this definitely is directed because for example, many, page, uh, many Wikipedia pages might have a link to a very common web page, maybe even just the Wikipedia homepage itself. But the Wikipedia homepage is not going to have a link to every other Wikipedia page. So this is definitely directed. What about the internet graph, where you have an edge of, you know, router A can send packet to router B? How many think directed? Okay, how many think undirected? All right, so it is undirected because again, uh, if you can send, uh, all of these links are bi-directional. Um, it's not necessarily true in wireless networks, uh, where there is a strong amount of directionality happening. But for this fiber cable stuff, it's all undirected. Okay. All right. Are there any questions on directed versus undirected? All right. So by default in this course, Unless it's mentioned otherwise, G will be undirected. <coughs> and so note, the way we have defined things, undirected is a much stronger condition than directed, right? So in other words, every undirected graph is a directed graph, but not every directed graph is an undirected graph. So, every undirected graph G is also directed. And if you kind of want to prove it, here's a simple proof by picture. You replace every undirected edge UV by two directed edges 
<coughs> okay, and by definition, this will end up with a direct input. All right. So we move on to the next definition, which is the notion of a path. So a path in a graph G is a sequence of vertices U1 up to UK such that for all I, again remember the square bracket is shorthand for all the integers from one to this number, right? So this is saying for all integers between one to k minus one, so basically all the first k minus one vertices. If you look at the ith vertex and the next guy, that's an edge. Okay. And note that here, uh, I, in this case, the definition works whether G is directed or not directed. Right? So it, it, it holds, for, uh, holds for both. And we are also going to denote this thing as a U1, UK path. And so if you path from, so this is the first, first what is left? I'll ask your name. Uh, Okay, I tried to do that, but okay, let's see. Is this okay? So, a couple of things to note. Uh, these vertices need not be distinct. And two, as I said, uh, it holds for both directed and undirected groups. In particular, what I mean to say is the definition is not specific to one or the other. All right, so let's kind of just go through some quick examples. So if I graph with four vertices and these three edges, uh, is DCBA a path? Yes, it's an undirected graph, so you can go either way. Is ABCD a path? Yes, you can just move from here to here. Is ABCB a path? Yes, because we are allowing uh, vertices to be repeated. So you can go from A to B, B to C, and then come back. <coughs> Is ACD a path? No, because there's no edge between A and C. So this is not a path. So again, the crucial definition is you can go directly from the ith guy to i plus one ith guy using one edge. Uh, I forgot your name, sorry. Nixon. Nixon. So here's the dilemma. I can focus it, but then it will be small, or I can zoom in and it won't be all. So, I mean, I don't know what to do. I mean, I can. So I think this has the best focus, but then it's smaller. Um, I'm sorry? Sure, how many want it at this stage? Okay, let's, I think that's, I'll just write bigger. So now, let's consider a graph, uh, it's a directed graph, so there's directions in the edges. Uh, all right, so is A, B, C, D a path? Yes, because you can just hop like this. Is D, C, B, A a path? No, because you can't go backwards. Is A, B, C, B a path? 
Now, because you can go from A to B, B to C, but you cannot go back. Is A, C, D a path? No, because again, there's no direct touch from A to C. So we're going to make another definition, which is, uh, so the definition of a path allows for repeating uh, vertices. Uh, so there's a definition of a special kind of path where the nothing is repeated. So we say uh, a simple path does not have any repeated vertices. Ah, uh, sorry. And by default, we assume that paths are simple. So as you can see, there are a bunch of defaults. So we talked about an NMM, we have talked about graphs being by default undirected. These are important things to remember because for example, if in an exam or homework it says, given a graph G, unless it says it's directed, you should assume uh, it's undirected. If you it said there's a path, you should assume that the path is a simple path. Okay. All right. Um, once we are talking about uh, paths, there's a very simple notion of length, which is how many edges are there in the path. Uh, so the length of a path is the number of edges in it. So for example, if we go back to this example again, A, B, C, D, and if you look at the path A, B, C, D, it has length three. Okay, because there are three edges in this one. Any questions? Everyone okay with all the definitions so far? Okay, if all of you are okay with the definitions, then I have a question for you. So what is the maximum length of a simple path. You can use any of the definition or notations that we've done so far. Uh, so talk to your friends for half a minute. Let me know if any questions. If not, tell me the answer to this question. <laughs> All right, uh, are there any questions in any of the definitions or notations we have seen so far? Okay, if not, any answers to the question, what is the maximum possible length of a simple path? Alex. 
and uh, almost there, just off. Uh, uh, next to Steven, you. Yeah, what's your name? Uh, sorry? On. on? Number of edges. So on thing is number of edges. That's way too much, potentially. Uh, Tyler. Uh, n minus one. N minus one, right? So you have n vertices. And so do any of you see a proof why it can't be n? Jordan? Josh? Uh, so Josh's thing is, what if there is one vertex, uh, and that's your graph? Uh, sure, uh, that's one way to argue that it cannot be n. But I want to argue that there can be no simple path of length n, not just one case. Why don't you talk to your friends for half a minute, a minute, and try to come up with an argument for why any path of length n cannot be simple. Suggestions or arguments for why, if there is a path of length at least n, then it cannot be simple. Uh, Jordan, no. I forgot your name again. Sorry, Josh. Sorry. Why not? So you are just saying your, your argument is cyclic. You can't say that you cannot have a simple path with because every path. Simple path can have only n minus one. If there are n paths, then it means something is repeated. Uh, so you're saying that if there's length n, then there has to be vertex that is repeated. That is correct, but why? John. Every time you travel a path, you, or sorry, every time you go across an edge, you hit a new node. And so if you go across n edges, then you would have seen n plus one node. Right, so the thing to note is a path of length L has L minus one nodes in it, right? So a path of length N has at least N minus one vertices in it. There are N minus one nodes, there are N unique IDs. Pigeonhole principle implies there will be one ID that is repeated, okay? All right, so I'll quickly state this. We'll come back to this fact later on in the course again. But uh, so, a path of length at least n has at least n plus one nodes in it. There can be only n unique node IDs because by definition that's my size of the set. So that implies by pigeon hole principle, uh, a node ID is repeated at least twice. Any questions on this? So fun detour into pigeonhole principle, and now we're back to definitions again. Um, so the next thing we're going to define is a cycle. 
So a cycle is a path u1 to uk such that the first and the last word is the same because you have to come back where you started off. It also has to be the case that the first k minus 1 are all distinct. So there's no repeat. So the only repeat that happens in the path is the first and the last guy are the same. And the third one you won't find in the book. Uh, it's kind of a corner case that was pointed out to me by one of the students many years back. So I'll just make it a point to present it. And that is, you need certain conditions on how large k can be. So this is not defined for say k equal to one or two. So in particular, if G is undirected, sorry, if G is directed, then you need K to be at least three. Okay. So what this is saying is U1 comma U1 is not, not a cycle. Okay. Uh, put another way, what I'm saying is I do not have what's called self loops. And again, it's not because that these are not interesting or that they don't crop up, it's just a simplifying assumption that will make life simpler going forward. We assume that there are no self loops in the graph. Okay, so this is not allowed. But if I have a graph like this, is this a cycle? How many think no? How many think yes? All right, so the majority went. So let's see all the conditions. The first and the last guy are the same. The first two guys are distinct and K is at least three. So we do allow this as a cycle for directed graphs. If G is undirected, <laughs> then we insist on K being four. And in particular, this is to rule out if you have an edge UW, then we say UWU is not a cycle. Okay? And, and the reason for these are most, mostly aesthetic, aesthetic, but it's kind of naturally, I mean, if you, I mean, you go from A to B and B to A, that's not really what you mean when you talk about cycles um, in underrated graphs. Okay. All right, uh, let's do a few more examples. If my graph is this guy, ABC, which kind of looks like a triangle, and indeed people call this the triangle graph, uh, is ABCA a cycle? Yes. Now this is a directed graph. Is ABC a cycle here? Yes, because you can go from A to B, B to C and back. Let's look at a slightly different graph. Is ABC a, a cycle in this graph? No, because you cannot go back from C to A because there's no backward edge from C to A. Okay. And one of, uh, I have to ask your name. Brandon. Brandon. Yeah, so you said for undirected graph, G, or G's undirected A is greater than equal to four, but the bottom left there is only three. Here? Modern, modern, modern. Now K is the sequence, not the number of vertices. Yeah. Any other questions? Richard. What do you mean by ideas? What? What do you mean by those ideas? Oh, IDs. 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 Any other questions? So one thing you should be a bit careful about is if you have a directed graph, 
So note that in some sense the structure between this and this is pretty much the same. The only difference is you have direction and the edges. And this is important to note because the direction of the edges can make a difference of whether the structure is, uh, has a cycle or not, right? So this has a cycle, this has a cycle, but this one does not. Okay. All right. Any questions? Uh, Alex. This and this? Uh, okay, let me redraw this. A, B, C. So you have an edge from here to here, here to here, but instead of having an edge from C to A, you only have an edge from A to C. Any other questions? Everyone okay so far? Paths, cycles, lens, directed, undirected. All right, let's move on. So we're going to talk about connectivity now. So we say two vertices U and W are connected if, oops, sorry. If there exists a, a UW path. Okay. Uh, this is for undirected. For directed graphs, uh, we have a stronger notion which is called strongly connected. So U and W are strongly connected. So this is a directed graph. If there exists both a path from U to W, so now this is directional, and a WU path. Okay, so as an example, if you have this graph ABC, are A and C connected? Yes, there's a path, you go from A to B to C. So now consider the case where you have a directed graph, edge from A to B and B to C, are A and C strongly connected? No, because you cannot go from C to A. All right. Once we have talked about whether two vertices are connected or strongly connected, we can talk about whether a graph as a whole is connected or strongly connected. So we'll say a graph or a directed graph is connected or strongly connected if for every u not equal to v, so for every distinct vertices, u and w are either connected if it's an undirected graph or strongly connected if it's a, uh, sorry, connected if it's an undirected graph and strongly connected if it's a directed graph. All right, so let's kind of go back to our triangle examples. So is this triangle graph connected? Yeah, yeah, because you can go from anywhere to anywhere, all right. How many think this graph is strongly connected? One, maybe, okay, two, three, okay, four, five, 
six. All right. How many of you think this is not strongly connected? All right. So the majority is wrong. This is not strongly connected. Oh, sorry. <laughs> It is indeed strongly connected because since this is a cycle, you can basically go from any vortex to any other vortex. Right, so to go from B to A, you can't directly take this edge, but you can take this longer route. So in particular, you can reach from any vortex to any other vortex. In this so this is strongly connected. So if you look at its cousin, which is similar, but not quite, is this strongly connected? Now, because there's no way to from you, for you to go from C to A. Okay. All right, uh, one more definition. We say the distance between two vertices U and W is the length of the shortest UW path. So for example, if I now have a four cycle, it's A, B, C, D, then the distance between A, D is you can take this path A, B, C, D, so it's three, but you can also take this direct path from, direct edge from A to D. So it is the minimum of these two paths, which in this case is one. Okay. Any questions so far? Mac. Uh, so Matt's question is in direct regress, is the distance from A to B same as B to A? Not necessarily, because for example, you could go from A to B, but you might not even be able to come back whatsoever. Yeah. But typically when we talk about distances in a graph, we talk about underrated graphs. Uh, because again, in practice, the notion of distance is always symmetric. Any other questions? Uh, I don't know your name, sorry. Nick. <laughs> Can you write the distance as one comma three? Oh, I'm sorry, it's supposed to mean the minimum of three comma one. Yeah, can you write it as three comma Yeah, so the minimum of a set of numbers is invariant about, it's not, it's commutative, right? So the minimum of two numbers is same, irrespective of what order they come. Yeah. Hiba. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, Siva's question is, can you have bi-directional arrows in directed graphs? Yes, you can. So for example, um, so let's do a quick example. So let's take this guy, okay? So I have, uh, sorry, A, B, C, And so currently this graph is not strongly connected, but if I put this guy back in, which you obviously can't see, but uh, so if you have a bi-directional edge, then this graph actually becomes strongly connected. Okay. So the only thing about directed graphs is you don't necessarily have bi-directed edges, you could. Another way to think about undirected graphs is they are necessarily, every edge is bi-directed if you think of them as directional. Um, oh, in case any of you wanted solutions to homework one, I have some copies, you can just come and pick them up. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys on Friday.